Another tough conference USA road trip for UCF Saturday afternoon. The Knights travel to Greenville, North Carolina to meet the defending conference USA champion East Carolina Pirates. Unfortunately for the Knights, a tough afternoon as well. UCF fights tough, but in the end loses to the Bucks by the final score of 19 to 14. Hello again, UCF fans. Welcome to yet another edition of UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. The coach is here. I'm Pat Clark. We're happy that you're here as well. George, I see that you still have hair today, which means you haven't yet pulled it out. But this must be enormously frustrating for you. A coach of a team that loses by five points could very well have won that game by at least that margin, don't you think? Well, I think we had some missed opportunities. And, you know, I think the big thing in this game was that when uh, you have opportunities, we had a block kick, we had a red zone interception, and, and we had one dropped in the end zone. Uh, so, I mean, those are points that you can't just give away. And, and those the, the opportunities there you got to take advantage of. We have been talking on this program throughout the year about the, the theme of the red zone and, and leaving points out there on the field. That happened again on Saturday. When these guys get inside the red zone, do, do you sense as a head coach that they're tightening up a little bit? What, what do you think it is? No, Can you put I, your I, finger on it, George? Or I don't think so. I think the block kick was one, uh, really it was a low kick by the kicker. and and we allowed some penetration in the A-gap, but not to the point where it should have been a block. A, a regular elevated kick would have been fine. Uh, and, the, and the interception was in the red zone was, you know, we we're trying to make a play and, you know, and it, it came off his hands into the hands of a defensive lineman. So, uh, and then the one drop, you know, you just can't be doing that. And those are opportunities you have. But, you know, more important, I thought the kids hung in there and they basically gave them an opportunity to win in the last quarter there. And, you know, I think that's what you're looking for. And I think keep the team moving the way they got to move that direction. But, you know, the, the big thing was that, you know, we got uh, the third downs that we didn't stop. I think that's the thing that really moved the field position in the game. Uh, you were never out of the game probably should have won as we've already mentioned here but late in the game this is this is almost like what happened at Southern Miss it seems like you might be out of the game but then you never are which shows the you were talking in your post game about this about the fight of these guys and the determination to still try to win the football game well it's just it's production too you, you got with the fight has to come production right. but I think the big thing with all that was that you know we had opportunities we got to stop people on third down that that's what really changed the field position and possession time in the second half. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Take a look back at the East Carolina game and look ahead to Memphis coming to Bright House Network Stadium this week. It's all straight ahead on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. UCF Sports Today is brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste by the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Syntex Homes. For a better way to a better home, visit Syntex.com. SP Sports is the exclusive worldwide marketer of UCF Athletics. And welcome back everybody to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary in the wake of UCF's 19 to 14 loss at East Carolina on Saturday. Coach, before we go any further, I have to ask you about the condition of Jordan Richards. A little scary moment for UCF and the UCF family when he went down. It appeared that he might have been knocked out, but uh, you say that he's going to uh, be well, okay. That's, that's exactly what happened. He, he was uh, knocked out. He was revived as far as you know talking and stuff I went out and you know he said coach he didn't want to leave the field you know he asked what yard line he was on <laughs> and stuff but took him in for precautions for the CAT scan and uh, everything was fine last night uh, and he was being released this morning uh, we left a trainer there to fly back with him uh, this morning so uh, I'll see him this morning uh, and uh, you know right now the last word I had was uh, uh, he was fine, and uh, all things were normal. That's great. Um, Brett Hodges, 
I'd like for you to evaluate his performance, George, because once again, he showed flashes of brilliance in the game. 21 of 34 for 266 yards and a touchdown. Unfortunately, he had four interceptions. How do you evaluate his performance in the aftermath of the game? Well, I, I think he's productive, but the number one thing a quarterback can't do is throw picks and throw interceptions. And, you know, I, I think uh, they had basically four, four sacks and six pressures on the quarterback. And, you know, that may have taken its toll on him a little at the back end of that. But, again, you, you can't give them the ball. And, and that's what put the field at, you know, in the time of possession the way it was in the second half, that, you know, we're just giving up the ball on offense. And we extended some, some possessions with some poor third down play on defense. So, you know, there's always an answer as to what's going on. But I think, I think Brett basically was pressing a little bit, trying to make a play instead of taking what the defense gave him. And, you know, I think when he sees the picture films today, uh, he'll see that, you know, just go through your read process and the right guy should get the ball. You were emphatic in your post-game comments when you said that he remains your quarterback, but Rob Calabrese always has but to be we, ready. We, we got to play both quarterbacks. You know, we really do. And uh, you know, I'm going to address it today because I think that's what should be done. I think both bring something to the table. They really do. And uh, a different nature of, you know, as far as athleticism a little bit. But... I think they both need to be in the picture and uh, and get things done that way. But I think I'm not, I'm very happy with Brett and, and what he's accomplished and what he's doing. And I think he had some bad moments out there. Uh, when you say that you're going to play two quarterbacks, is that to suggest that we might see Rob Calabrese on the field at some point during the Memphis game? This no, that's what you're suggesting. <laughs> well, I'm just wondering. No, no, I'm saying is that I don't, I've never been uh, one with just to go with one. And if I think that you have a second guy out there that if opportunity arises to, to get him out there and, and, and get some work done there because I I still continue to see good things from him in practice. I'm just waiting for him to take him to the game field. Okay. All right, George, let's uh, head into some first half highlights. And uh, I got to tell you, you must have been very happy with your defense on East Carolina's first drive. Take a look at this uh, fumble here, which actually was caused by Jordan Richards and Lawrence Young as Johnny on the spot for the recovery. That's what we need to happen more and more often. And a uh, great recovery, great hit to cause the fumble. And then UCF takes the ball and immediately marches downfield. Here's Brett with a nice pass to Brent Harvey. This one will be good for 11 yards. You talk about yards after the catch. That's a nice play right there. It really was. And A.J. Guyton will kick off what was a big day for him, a 13-yard sideline grab to continue what would be a scoring drive for UCF. And then a big play on this drive, a 40-yard. This is the longest pass play of the season for UCF. Brett Hodges with a deep 40-yard pass that is pulled in by Kamar Aiken. He's had a couple of those this year, George. He really has. You know, I've been pleased with him. And I, all the receivers, I thought, got some yak after the catch, which was important in this game. And Brent Harvey with the actual touchdown here, a 19-yard rushing touchdown. It was 7 to nothing at the time. East Carolina would take a 10 to 7 lead into the locker room at halftime, but we've we've alluded to the the points left on the field. Uh, you had a drop ball in the end zone and and the blocked kick as well. What did you tell the young man at halftime, coach? That basically, you know, anything that happened out there, we have an opportunity to go out and play a great second half and go out and win this ball game doing what we have to get done and you know, and continue doing the things we were doing. We were doing so many good things out there in the first half. I think there were three or four plays that, you know, you can't give up with points. But I think the big thing was that they left, you know, basically ready to go out there and play. And, you know, as I, as I said to him earlier in the game or that night before, that the same four things, you play hard, you play smart, you play together, and you play to win. And, you know, and even after the game we, I spoke about, you know, you did three of them. I don't think we played smart all the time. And, yeah, I use the word we all the time because I think we're all involved in it. But I think the big thing is is that, you know, they, they, they're getting better in some areas. We just got to basically get, when we have a chance to be productive, we need to be productive. What was your gut feeling at halftime about how your team was performing? You said you saw some good things. Well, I thought that we were basically playing good defense. We were tackling fairly well. Uh, I thought basically the offense had their moments as far as getting the thing done. And, you know, we sort of shot ourselves in the foot as far as a fumble, 18-yard run and a fumble by the, the first time, uh, Kelly. Uh, but, again, he's a, he's a good back and he has to play. And I think, you know, uh, you're going to continue to see him on the field. And then we had the interception, and I went through them with the players. And, you know, and they left very comfortable and confident about, you know, let's do what we got to get done and let's go out and 
you know, go out and play like we practice. All right, George, off now to the second half up at uh, East Carolina. And uh, you're going to see a really nice uh, stand here. Travis Timmons and Lawrence Young with no gain in the red zone. Uh, that was on a second and goal play right there. It really was. We played well down there. Our, our problem has been third down down there. Mm. You're, you're, you talk about the yards after the catch, Coach, and here's another great example of how the Knights seem to be improving in this area. A Rocky Ross with a 35-yarder and a lot of those yards on his own. Really were. And here's Guyton again, and this was a big day for A.J. Nine catches for 119 yards. This continues a scoring drive, and then uh, Kamar Aiken will get a 10-yard touchdown right here. This, of course, is late in the football game when it appeared that UCF might be out of it. Brett taking his time, and he'll find Aiken in the end zone, a 10-yard scoring play, and Kamar doing a good job getting his feet down there. Great job by Brett taking time to find the guy and then delivering. Okay, here's the onside kick that... Uh, well, so many times this doesn't work, George, but in this case it did, and suddenly it, new life for your it, team. It came off perfect. It really did, and uh, good job by Nick Katoy, the kicker, and uh, great recovery. And, you know, at least you had an opportunity. I think it was, what, 13 or 15 seconds left or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you had an opportunity to get something done, one throw, and then you try to, you know, you know, get the ball in the end zone. But, you know, he threw a pick on the next one, and that's what hurt. Was your defense ultimately tired at the end? I guess that goes without saying. They were on the field for a long time in the well, second they half. Well, they were, but a lot of that was self-inflicted. I mean, you got, you know, the, the biggest problem I had was uh, third downs. And I'm not talking third in normal situations, but third and long. And, you know, we got to make a play, whether in the rush game as far as pass rush or in coverage. And, you know, you get to third and 17, third and 20, uh, you know, that it definitely, you know, switches to the defense having the advantage. And, you know, when they throw a ball for 20 yards and they throw it for 17, you know, sometime the rush needs to take over. Let's talk a little bit about what your mindset is with regard to the whole team. Are you still seeing improvement from your team from week to oh, week now? I think we've improved offensively each week. I think defensively, uh, we still got to continue to work on point of contact as far as yeah, I still think there's way too much hidden yardage after a hit, after a contact. We got, you know, we got to run our feet and then fundamentals that you can, we continue to work on practice. But, you know, I, I thought the kids were very upbeat and, and they understand what the mistakes are. And I don't dwell very long on past games. I get right into the next game and once we cover the mistakes today and and move on and uh, I think most of the players understand that you know at the right moment you make the play we're supposed to make then you know things are different shade coming into Sunday. All right we will put East Carolina behind us and we will look ahead to Memphis a little bit later on a break right now more with George O'Leary right after this. The Knights Kids Club presented by Chick-fil-A is an exciting new club just for kids 8th grade and under. Call 407-823-6165 or log on to ucfathletics.com to join now. Attendance people, listen up. Albertson. Here. Barnes. Here. Swain. Here. Reyes. Here. Perez. Here. Clark. Here. Gerbic. Here. Sellers. Here. Nguyen. Here. Tomei. Here. And Miller. Here. In our classrooms and throughout our community, UCF stands for opportunity. Block 15, he gets outside of the 10, he's to the 5, he's in, touchdown, bring Harvey, he'll score from 19 yards out, and the Knights get the turnover and go 89 yards for the touchdown. Coach, another solid day for Brent Harvey, 16 carries for 74 yards. No one is ever going to confuse any UCF running back with Kevin Smith. But are you starting to see a little bit of Kevin Smith in him? And I, I say that because at first you had some young running backs last year who would get the ball and just go. It seems like now 
there are instances where Bryn will get the ball and he is waiting just briefly because you don't have much time to find a hole and then he'll try to get right through it. Well, I think his vision's getting better and I think that run for the touchdown was a perfect example of it where, you know, he, he didn't just try to hit the hole. He, he saw it open up and then had the burst there. But I think he's seen more second level players. That's what takes the while. It's not the first level. It's the second level. That's the guys you have to beat to get to the secondary. Okay. Everyone knows that every school that has a football program has some form of a letterman's club, and UCF has been that way for some time. But it never used to be what it has become now. I know you're very proud of that. We'll talk about that. But I want you folks to see how the letterman's club has really made a resurgence at UCF. Well, the letterman's club, the idea is to get all the ex-players back together where they stay in touch not only with themselves, but also with the school and keep them, you know, in the loop of what's going on. It takes a lot, a lot of work. This, uh, once they finish uh, playing, they kind of go their own way, so it's kind of hard, you know, to get them together. They live to different parts of the country, different areas of the state. But uh, luckily, uh, we have been very successful. We got people, you know, from the south end of the state and all the way up to Chicago. What I've enjoyed the most is the family that I have created. And when I say have created is, it's nice that a lot of these guys look up to me as a father more than anything else. And the uh, years, it's really been very, very rewarding to me that not only did I meet them when they were 18 or 19, but now I know their kids that are 18, 19, 20. And uh, it, it's like having a large family. I really enjoy every minute of it. Well, actually, it was uh, Coach O'Leary wanted to do something for all the lettermen, and he named this the Letterman's Game or the Letterman's Weekend for the game. I got a feeling it's going to grow and grow, especially after last weekend. There's a lot of lettermen now that want to do it again for the Miami game, and they want to do it for another game. And then they're saying, let's do it every game. So they're really getting involved. And uh, I've noticed in the last week we've had uh, five people that uh, I didn't even know where they were to call up to join. and. It's getting a lot of activity. And I think it's good for the school because a lot of them have become successful businessmen, which turn around and give back to the school. Uh, so it's a good way to build, you know, not only our, our let's say, our, our staff and uh, the people in the Letterman, but also the community, you know, that gets behind it. Well, the reason it's grown, I think, is because uh, Coach O'Leary has really, really helped. You know, I mean, actually, uh, Coach O'Leary loves when the lettermen come by and say hello. He really enjoys that. And uh, I think that a lot of the lettermen, by coming by to see me or just stopping by and meeting Coach O'Leary, they've realized that it's not what everybody thought he was. He's really, really behind the lettermen, behind his players and ex-players. George, you said a number of years ago when you arrived at UCF that one thing you really wanted to do was bring people who, for whatever reason, had fallen away from the university, bring them back into the fold, and now you're kind of starting to see the fruits of your labor improve right there. Oh, I think it is. I think, obviously, the, you know, Manny has done a great job with that because he knows them all. And, again, there's something facility-wise they're very, very proud of. And, and they're part of the heritage as far as the school is concerned, the football program, right from the first 79 team right through all the different years. So, and it's all different guys who belong to it. So uh, it's working well. It's, was it where it should be right now? I think it's getting there, but it's not where it should be. But I think there's a great interest in what's going on and, and following up at UCF and where they graduate from. Well, Manny alluded to it in that piece as well. You know, you, you have really tried to embrace these former players. And I think that they appreciate that from a head coach because they, many of them don't know you personally. And for you to have guys dropping by, they, you enjoy that as much as they, don't you? Oh, you always love talking about it. You hear names all the time. And a lot of them I have met and stuff. And they've been very involved with the program and whatever they can do to help. And again, there's still many that we have to get in, involved in the program. But I think uh, we've reached out to them as many ways as we can. And I think the fruits of the labor are starting to show. Are you finding that there's more interest just as a whole with the, when you walk around the community out here, not only from the Letterman, but from students as well, and even just some boosters? Oh, I, I think when they come on campus and uh, the facilities, game day atmosphere, they're proud of what's going on here right now, and they should be. Uh, I think the big thing is that you, you, you stay together as a fan base, uh, 
a team and, and you know, and, and basically understand that we're here for the student athletes. All right, Coach, good stuff. Another break. We're looking ahead to next week's game against Memphis. Straight ahead on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. Be sure to visit Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterford Lakes every Thursday night from 7 to 8 p.m. during the season to hear the George O'Leary Radio Call-In Show. Fans, here are your run for Ronald totals for the game. UCF had 336 yards of offense and two touchdowns for a total donation to the Ronald McDonald House of $536. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Okay, welcome back everybody to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. The Knights now looking ahead to another uh, important Conference USA game coming up Saturday afternoon at 3.30 Bright House Network Stadium against Memphis. Your team now 0-2 in the conference, George. That's, a, a, as you know, an enormous hole to be in early on in the season. Is it one you can dig out from? Oh, yeah. I, I, you, you only can do is play the game at hand, and you can't, you know, you, you get concerned. But, you know, we had our opportunity. Now we got, you got basically the next season up, the fifth season, and that's all you should be concerned about. And you play one game at a time, and let's see what happens at the end. And uh, I'll impress that upon the kids. I mean, they they went out and played two conference games and, and basically we just got to move on and another conference game coming this week and we got to get on the winning side of the ledger. Memphis is uh, one and three overall coming into the game Saturday afternoon. 0 and one in Conference USA having played its first league game on Saturday. That was a, a loss to Marshall. What do you know about the Tigers this year? Well one they're, they're basically throwing the ball a lot. They're probably 50-50 run pass but a lot of the same uh, routes are all the same screens that you've seen with Southern Miss and East Carolina. It's it's almost you cover one, you cover them all. But I think that, and they're playing, you know, uh, a lot of pressure defense. So uh, it'll be an interesting game. We've always seemed to come in and, and come down to the fourth quarter or whatever with them. But I think basically is that we need a win, and they're coming in. Uh, I don't, I, that was their first conference game mm -hmm. too, wasn't it? So they, they're in the same boat we're in. Well, good luck to you on Saturday, Coach. Thank you. And we'll look forward to uh, talking to you next week. We hope that you folks will make plans to join us for another edition of UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. So until next week at the same time for the coach and everyone at UCF and ISP, I'm Pat Clark. So long, everybody. UCF Sports Today has been brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Today's show was also presented in part by Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. And Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life.